Stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading today is Psalm chapter 66, verses 1 through 8. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him, who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn. I have a confession. Well, really two confessions. The first one is that I've been... Please be seated. The power, right? The first one is I have been connected for so, with Concordia for so long that some people refer to me as a lifer, a term that I find with pride, a term that I've earned through many, many years. I've been here so long, I've been in every nook and cranny of this campus, I think. I found a new one today over there I didn't know existed. A couple years ago, I entered the cadaver lab for the first time. I don't think I'll go there again. The other confession is that this is the very first time I've ever given chapel. I don't know why I put it off so long, but I'm very pleased and excited to be here today. Today's text from the book of Psalms, which has always been read, is a song of praise. Although it appears that there might not be a consensus on what exactly it's speaking to, perhaps the text relates to God delivering Israel from a particular invasion. It does remind the reader of the abundant power the Lord gives to his people and the need to be thankful for what he does for us every day. While reflecting on this text, I thought it was pretty profound that today is December 7th, a day that all Americans should never forget and we should always thank God for what it represents. On this date, 1941, a day that will live in infamy, as spoken by President Roosevelt, Pearl Harbor was attacked and launched the U.S. officially into World War II, maybe one of the most significant U.S. events of history. The start of a very long journey where the outcome was unknown, similar to maybe the Israelites fleeing Egypt. The Israelites in the United States had no idea where their past would go from the onset. The Israelites, by the invasion of some country I can't pronounce, I didn't go to seminary, I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, I have no clue how to pronounce it, but, or certain invasion, or fleeing Egypt, or when the U.S. entered World War II. I think thanking God is really easy once the event is over. I think it's really easy to look back and if the outcome was favorable to us, yeah, thanks God for doing that. Israel left Egypt. U.S. won World War II. I think thanking God, I, we tend to be thankful for success. We tend to be thankful for a good grade, our team winning a game, or when you're in great need. Do we thank God for what is still to come? Or when the outcome is not what we wanted? We might think that our outcome is more desirable than another, that we want a certain thing to happen, and that we really have a particular need for the outcome to be a certain way, a particular job, a relationship, health for a loved one. We've all completed journeys to be thankful. Some of us just being at Concordia is a journey that we want to thank God for. Others have other journeys. I know in my own life, I've had many journeys where I didn't know where the outcome was going to lead me. Verse 6 describes the turning of sea to dry land. You know, this is a miracle that I've always thought a lot about. You know, the party in the Red Sea, okay? And I can picture it. I've seen the Ten Commandments, right? All four hours, you see the water open, and okay. But I know that miracles still occur every day. Often I think the world that we live in today tries to rationalize miracles and not give the recognition to who it deserves. Sometimes these are very small. 
I think the one I reflect on the most is when my wife was pregnant with our oldest son, she was working at a school, she was teaching, and I received a page, yeah, I said page on my pager, from the principal saying that I needed to get to the hospital right away, that she had, she'd um, come ill, they'd taken her to the hospital. The only catch was I didn't know where the hospital was. I was new to the town. I knew kind of where it was. I knew kind of exactly where, but I didn't know exactly where it was. So I drove in a panic, you know, as any husband, especially when their wife is pregnant is. And I prayed to God and the day before I owned a GPS to give me direction and to get me to find the way to where I need to go. My prayers were answered. I turned the right way and arrived at the emergency room in the perfect path. Wife and son were, were fine, but it showed to me a little miracle that I had in my life. I truly, believe, I truly believe that was a divine intervention. I truly believe the Lord provided me with a small miracle that day. That's just my story. There's many other stories that you have, students have, where the Lord provided a miracle in their own lives. Our text speaks to the power of our Lord. So awesome are your deeds, your enemies cringe before you. I kind of thought about that as well. What a powerful God we have. Certainly we want to be on God's side. I think of having God as a friend, it's kind of like having that biggest kid in school, the biggest guy in the football team be your friend. He's your friend. No one's going to pick on you. The bullies are going to stay away. Maybe some of the teachers too. Ah, isn't that great? I've asked campus safety to follow me around, but they won't. I said it'd be kind of neat having an escort everywhere I went. But seriously, I see this manifested by many of you every day. This big friend gives us safety and comfort. I have witnessed many people in our Concordia community doing things that they would just say, oh, well, that's no big deal. That's just a small act. That's nothing worth being recognized for. These in actions include inviting someone you don't really know who's sitting by themselves to come eat with you and their friends so they don't eat by themselves. Encouraging a friend who's down or just needs to pick me up or you just want them to feel better about themselves. To open a door for someone who needs it. Just saying hi to someone in the hallway, or being welcomed to someone who's different from you, either an international student, Bethesda student, or even a Lions fan. The effect that these simple gestures have often are greater than most of you will ever know. In my home, it goes something like this. Josh, you don't know what you're talking about. Said by my 10-year-old daughter to my 8-year-old son, which is then intervened by either my wife or I saying, Hannah, your brother is fine. Leave him alone. And that intervention, that big friend, gives comfort back to my son and cringes my daughter. However, my daughter is also the one who often meet me at the door as I come home and used to give me junk hugs, but as she gets older, those need to slow down a little bit. Asks how my day was and lets me know that she thinks I'm a great dad. There's so many things to be thankful for. Thankful for what has happened, but also what will still happen. A successful semester, good relationships, health, a safe trip home. I remember many years hoping and praying that there would not be snow and be able to get home safely. One thing I'm continuing to be thankful for are you, our Concordia students. I'm inspired every day by the actions that I see, like I've already mentioned. I know the journey with you, the student, will continue to be both good and bad. But either way, let's praise God for what he will be giving us. I pray often for our student's success and safety, thanking God for this. But knowing what the future will be, and knowing not all of our prayers will be met. I leave with two challenges today. The first one is to be thankful. Be thankful for what the Lord has done for us, but also be thankful for what the Lord still is to do for us. My second challenge is to ask and encourage you to continue doing what you already are, and that's being that friend, that supporter, that help to this community for those in need. Amen. We rise for prayers.